Hello everybody, this is Dan from The Fundamentals here with a, well, it's sort of like an unboxing. Uh, it's something that um, I was sent to me by Paizo, our good friends at Paizo. I'm a big fan of, big fan of Starfinder and Pathfinder, as you may have read some of my articles. Um, this is the Starfinder Beginner Box. So this is going to be a bit of an unboxing, but it's not necessarily a traditional sort of board game. Um, because what the Starfighter Beginner Box is, is it is a one-stop shop. Everything that you need to get going on playing the tabletop RPG of Starfinder. Um, so if you look, the Beginner Box. Launch into an exciting universe of science fantasy adventure with the Starfinder Beginner Box. Create and customize your own futuristic hero to play through challenging adventures and action-packed battles against dangerous foes. With streamlined rules, this deluxe boxed set is the ideal introduction to the Starfinder role-playing game. For two to seven players, welcome to the best launch pad for a lifetime of pulse-pounding adventure among the stars. The only limit is your imagination. You get a Hero's Handbook, which is... Uh, has everything you need to play the game plus a short solo adventure. So if you are lonely or um, want to try this out before you bring it to your group, you can play this solo. Now again, that's not the so one thing they say is it's not the full core rule book, um, which is one volume, unlike other uh, games where it's uh, multiple volumes. But GMs and and PCs have the same book, um, so it's not a replacement for that. But it has a lot of content, as we'll see. Uh, a game master's guide. So that is something that lets you create your own um, adventure, as well as having some stuff in there for you. Um, dice, you gotta have dice. Pawns, which I will show off to you with bases. Um, 80 pawns, 24 bases, so some swapping. Pregens, blank sheets, a helpful cards, and a flip map. So, ages 13 and up, times 60 minutes, that is, that is generous. Okay, so, pretty compact little box, and let us see what's inside. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay, so, um, I've already opened this up and made some, looked at it a little bit, so I guess some stuff set up. Um, so the first thing is, oops, well, the first thing is a set of dice, very basic set of black dice with your d6, your the classic the d20, you gotta have that, well not for some systems but for this system, a d4, um, interest, with an interesting way of having it like that, sometimes some points that those tend to differ. Your percentage die, 80, 20. These are, and these are uh, basic, the basic building blocks for a dice collection. Um, you have these seven, um, uh, so this is a, uh, that was a D10, that's what this would be. So some D10s have percent, a lot of them are percentage dice, um, but they also just have regular numbers, one through 10. Um, this, is an example of that D10. See? And then a D8, which is a pyramid. So that is the basic, although this, sometimes you might need to get a D12. Um, they don't have one in that, but those aren't. But basically that's your basic, that's your basic lot of dice. So um, they really set you up, and that, those can be used in any Starfinder game, any any game, obviously, um, <laughs> but they're the basic set for D20 based systems like Pathfinder, like Starfinder, like Dungeons and Dragons. Um, oh, there it is. Here's the D12. It's uh, weird. Um, but that is your basic dice set. So that's already a cool thing that you get. Now, before we get to the little critters, let's look at the information. Oh, God. Okay. Before going any further, read this page to help you get started with the Starfinder Beginner Box. It has everything you need in it. It's a very nice glossy sheet of paper with a full inventory. So this is both a great way to know what you're getting. D2, D10, D12, C, and everything that you've got in it. So, 
here. These are the help cards. So they have things like well, how flat footed works, how frightened works. Um, on the back, it tells you what you can do in your turn. You can move, take an action, what those are, how resting works, how modifiers work. This is stuff that's done really useful for any game. Um, I know as a, I, I'm a DM a lot of the time, and um, it, even if, and I've been playing for a long time, and so the people I play with usually, um, and they're, this is stuff is easy to forget. Um, so this is actually going to be something that you will be using even as you outgrow, I think, out you outgrow this um, beginner's box. So that's a really nice thing that they've done is that it's a, it's a kicking off point, um, but there's stuff that it retains. So... Let's look at the flip mat. Now the flip mat is kind of hard to show because it's a big thing. Um, yeah, see, there's one thing. I'll use the visual gate. But basically, one side is basically just grid. So anything you want with some space and feel. The other side is a dungeon the pad and rooms and everything for the pre-gen adventure um, again something uh, especially this side of it is something that you really will be wanting to use um, as you go into the future uh, of, um, of playing the game I mean, even if you don't necessarily there's a lot of minis uh, these grids are really 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 helpful then we have our character guides. Again, very useful. Now these are um, pre-generated character sheets that tell you things like how the ability modifiers work, your information, your defense. So this is a character sheet for the Envoy. Who An Envoy is like a... I guess they're sort of like a bard in some ways. Uh, the Envoy is a um, charismatic person who in inspires. So yeah, they're basically a, 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 they're light, they're cheery, they tell stories, they sing songs, they're basically a space bard. Um, but this is the character sheet for Navasi, a human envoy. It tells you her pronouns, tells you she's level one, an outlaw. Um, all the characters have themes that you, in Starfinder, have themes that you use to um, figure out to figure out different things like background and also give us a few bonuses um, what feats or skills so that is that you've got the mystic who is and these are sort of the iconics uh, iconic uh, characters that you've seen in a lot of that they have in Pathfinder and in D&D &D. this is an envoy envoys are basically like clerics um, this is Keskadai he's a Sheeran those are the bug people. He's a healer. An operative. Operatives are ro rogues. Um, ro he, this is an ISIF. It's actually the pronouns is they, them. ISIF is an android. A lot of androids use uh, gender neutral pronouns um, because they are robot people. And that's something they do with that. We've got a mechanic. Mechanics are like artificers, um, they can kind of go a few different routes where they make robots or they make bombs. Um, uh, this is a Ratman mechanic. A soldier. He is a, well, I say Ratman. The technical term is Isoki. That's Quig. This is a Vesk, Vesk, Vesk soldier named Obozaya. Uh, soldiers are fighters. They're, they have a few different routes. Uh, he has the big gun and the melee weapon. Um, the Technomancer, uh, one of the other big, one of the big, uh, the other big spell class. They're uh, magic users, but they blend it with technology. So, um, in one of my games, my Technomancer, he has the ability to throw a cloud of tiny, tiny nanobots at people that just mess them all right up. Then, so basically what the, these sheets, 
They're guides to help you make a character. Um, they're also really, really pretty. I mean, they are gorgeous. Um, and she on the back, they have the background. Raya was the child diplomat who taught her the value of all sentient life. She's a Lashunta. Uh, Lashunta are uh, tel uh, telepathic aliens with uh, fun little antennae. Um, they're in some ways serve the same purpose that Vulcans do in Star Trek in relation to how they interact with humanity. But yeah, this has backgrounds, and these are great things because you can you can play these characters after the Starfinder thing. Um, leave you with some inspiration. But if you are, once you've played that, you understand the game, or um, if you want to try it with brand new characters and not with these at all, they do include some lovely character sheets. These are really, really nice. Um, I know that they're just paper, but they're um, well-made paper. They're very colorful. They tell you the different dice. Um, and this is the basic Starfinder character sheet. Um, everything for your racial traits to your defense attacks, um, weapons, uh, fusions, hit points. Uh, there's a really fun thing in Starfinder where you have stamina, where you have um, resolve points and uh, stamina. And so as you take damage, you recover um, some of your stamina and things. So you don't just lose health immediately. Uh, so it's really, really nice. Skills, you've got athletics, culture, interaction, medicine, mysticism, perception, science, stealth, um, all of all the basic stuff. Some things are changed, some things are different from Pathfinder. It's generally a really nice uh, halfway point between the crunchy, crunchy, crunchy of um, a traditional game, um, but without but a little bit, uh, not quite as streamlined as it could be. We have our equipment, character portrait, you can sketch it out, spells, all that stuff. So, another really good useful thing even as you evolve past. Now the things that won't necessarily live past this are, we have our Hero's Handbook, these are both in the Game Master's Guide. There's the right man, there's the Mystic and the Technomancer. So the GM's Guide, it's a combat reference, um, and we'll go in depth, but it has a really cool, it goes through, uh, it has a little mini uh, monster manual in it. Um, there's the Neon Guard, the Akata. Um, and then it gives you ideas of the packed worlds, like Akaton, Castrovel, Triaxis. Computer, how the different skills works, how terrain works. Um, all the tools you really need to build a adventure. Um, there's also, I believe, an advent. Yes, there's an adventure to st in Steel Talon's Lair, which I won't spoil. But this is a pre-generated adventure for um, for characters, either pre-generated or um, original, that you can run as a very basic. Um, introduction to Starfinder. The Hero's Handbook is for players, not G, well, for both. It should be, if you're a GM, you should read both. But this has things like how actions work, different starships, um, how to play the game, different weapons. You know, the, the, the core rulebook has all of this stuff much more in depth and many more options. But, um, you know, it tells you how to, and it, it lets you make a character. Um, and obviously, um, it's enough to get started, but if you get hooked by it, you can figure that out. Now, the other thing about this is that um, it tells you how to make a character, too. That's really cool. There's also a solo, Scoundrels in the Spike. It's a solo adventure that is a way for you to learn this game on your own if you buy this set. Um, I've played through it. Um, it's kind of fun. You're fighting uh, Space Goblins because... It's Starfinder, and there have to be space goblins. Um, and it's, you know, it's it's not super difficult. It gives you an idea of how everything works. Um, it's a fun little introduction. Uh, but they, they won't last um, super long for continued play. Um, you'd want to use these to get started and teach yourself, but you wouldn't necessarily... But, and, the, the, you know, the stuff doesn't actually age out, but um, you, you'd want to invest in the, the more heavy-duty bit. And then, all right, well... Finally, there are these buggers. 
these are the tokens. Now, these are things that are really, um, you know, I would say, the, honestly, I know this says beginner's box, um, but it's a really great resource if you're starting out with Starfinder, even if you have experience with it, um, because it has, these resources are really, really, really helpful. Um, and so we have our, um, these are tokens. Now, one thing I will say, this is something that I'm sometimes on the outside of when it comes to tabletop, is I'm not really a huge, uh, I, I never spend too much time on miniatures, mostly because I grew up uh, without a whole lot of money, so, um, or, I never, or I never personally had a lot of money. Um, to have miniatures that I could paint and you know, waste money on, um, like a lot of people do. But um, they are fun, and they are a really fun, easy way to as a D make your life a lot easier as a DM. So these are very, very helpful for both characters and GMs who want to um, up their game, and also with a visual reference. Um, Move on. There we go. Not only so, it's a mix of player characters. Oh, oh dear, that is wrong. Player characters, monsters, um, robots, um, and obviously you get less stands than there are uh, critters. Where's the other big boy? Here's some crest eater. They're freaky. They help people don't need their crests. Um, but there's enough for several adventures, and, and they're really very, very high quality, thick cardboard, glossy, well illustrated. Um, that's the robot dragon. But you can see there's that. There's um, yeah. space goblin. Um, a these guys skittermanders. They have. Uh, they're freaky. They're fun, though. Their, their whole backstory is uh, they exist to serve um, no matter what. And so it's a survival mechanism. And so when the Vesk, these guys, this is the iconic guy, uh, the lizard people invaded, uh, they showed up, and the, the, the little furry things, the little, little spacey walks basically said, hey, we're going to work for you now. Like the invasion happened overnight. And basically, what, because the lizards hate um, administration, they ended up becoming the bureaucracy of the Vesk Empire um, to the point where uh, some think that they got invaded in reverse. Um, here is a Migo, as in the Lovecraft. These guys, is a, I believe it's called a thinker, a contemplative. They're actually playable. Um, they float around with their big old brains. Um, Got a, there's the crust eater. This is a Kzarek. He's got a noodly face. Uh, here is the Ed Sheeran. I call him Ed Sheeran. Um, so there's some, there's also some things like here's a space pirate. Um, they can represent other characters too, not just the iconic ones. And then there's the box. There's a few. <laughs> It's obviously more than you would need. So, you've got things like an evil Technomancer. It could be a good guy, though, if you wanted your Technomancer to be an android. Uh, here's another There's about four or five of each of the core races. Um, the reason being, come on. The reason being, um, A, they're things that you fight. Um, and B, you might want to play as them. So, here we have a gang tough. Who could easily be a outlaw or something. Um, and of course, monsters, you have, and then of course you have your, you gotta have a cube in a dungeon game, assembly cube. Another Vesk. Um, this is a Kasatha. They are also playable, they have four arms. Um, and forearms on their forearms. Um, and uh, they are from some kind of weird desert planet. Of course, 
Space Gerblins, more Humies, an evil mechanic. Let's see, anything else? There's just it, Starfinder is really fun. Oh, here's a white Hisoki. Isn't they cute? Uh, Starfinder is a really fun thing because it has a lot of the trappings of normal Pathfinder, but in space and streamlined in many ways. Um, and they really have a lot of fun with um, what you can do in space because it's, you know, with magic, with here's the space drow, they took over Pluto. They're just as big a dicks as they always were, but now they're on Pluto. Um, with what you can do with magic, what you can do with with reality, um, in space, with science fiction. So, uh, it's definitely something worth, worth checking out. So here's another, here's a human, but with, with magic. Um, you know, you're not going to come into this expecting a, um, I come into this expecting, like, a big, a big, uh, serious thing, but you can do whatever you want. That is the Starfinder Beginner Buck. It just, like, just came out, um, from Paizo, it's the it comes after they've done the uh, Pathfinder beginner box. It's kind of a new trend that a lot of companies are doing with these beginner sets. I know um, Wizards has done a few with D and D. Um, there's been I think there's a Call of Cthulhu one. Green Br Green Ronin's done one with Game of with the Song of Ice and Fire RPG. I think the reason I think that they're doing it is because there's a lot of interest in these things and. Um, people playing games, but there's a barrier of entry um, with them because they're hard to understand. Hard, there's a lot of money investment. But this, uh, the Starfinder Beginner Box, this, everything you saw there, the, the books, the map, the little diddlies, um, the, you know, with the adventure for one, the adventure for a lot of people, uh, all of these things. And again, everything in this is basically multi-use, um, and everything can be used... Um, especially the reference materials and the miniatures and the dice all can be used uh, for essentially forever. Um, and the books themselves are not bad. I mean, they look good on a the shelf. They're very well made, very glossy. Um, you know, and it's something that, you know, when you finish them, if you've used them up, you can pass them on to somebody else they can learn too. Um, and that's always great. And it's always something, look, something you can definitely do with this. Um, it's all very compact, all fits together very well. Um, and you can, as you, it also has information on different books, the core rule book, the Pact Worlds, how to find all that stuff. It even has how to get involved with, yeah, see, it tells you where to, you can find the core rule book, the Pact Worlds splat book, the different alien archives, and the Starfinder Society, which is the professional or competitive Starfinder um, community. Um, you can find all this. All of it goes in, and it is forty dollars right now, retailing forty bucks. You can find it on it's on it's at Barnes and Noble, um, it's at uh, you know your local game store. Always support your local game store. It's online, uh, forty dollars, um, which is not really a bad value for this. Um, so if you've been thinking about um, getting to Starfinder, or really any um, RPGs, um, this is a really good entry point. Uh, I would say in some ways it's a really good entry point for anybody into RPGs because the Starfinder setting is very eclectic and in some ways modern and lets you do a lot of really, really cool stuff. It's a way bigger sandbox in many ways than the the Paizo, not the Paizo, the Pathfinder setting in Galarian that doesn't require knowledge of Pathfinder to play either. Um, Things are more recognizable, and you know, and, and science fiction is, um, in some ways, interesting. Um, very beautiful art, as always. Um, so definitely check this out. Definitely pick it up. Someone you know would be a great gift. Um, but definitely check the game out. Play as a dragon with a gun. Play as anything you want. Play as a floating brain guy. Play as whatever the hell this thing is. A hisper uh, and definitely pick it up and keep an eye out on the fundamentals for all the latest from Paizo as well as reviews of books and adventure paths and all sorts of things and until then happy gaming